All right, so a uh, little Houdini cool trick here. Um, I just want to share with you guys. So here we have, you know, we bring in our limbic, we scale it down so that way we're in um, meters because uh, everything coming out of uh, our other packages are in centimeters. Uh, so, so this is just kind of normal uh, par for the course. And then if you export and need to go to Maya before you export, you'd put a transform and scale it up by 100, a factor of 100, and then things will will transfer correctly. And that's that's the normal Houdini back and forth workflow. Okay, so here we have feathers, beak, eyes. Um, so in this case, like I want to be able to assign feathers uh, shaders. I don't necessarily, um, or I want to be able to do stuff with the individual feathers, right? It'll allow me to like paint on those things, you know, like a, a I can break these up. Um, uh, and so we have to do a few things. First, we're going to unpack this, right? So the Alembic comes in as a packed Alembic, and we want to unpack that, and we want it to transfer the path attribute. You just click that and transfer the path. Uh, always keep the path attribute, very helpful. Then we're going to convert that, because it comes in when you unpack it, um, if we look at the information on this, it comes in as poly soups. And those are fine, they're, they're really lightweight, um, and memory-wise they're good, like we like that. Um, for rendering and, and whatnot, but for uh, being able to like make some adjustments and do some things, we want to be able to um, come in and and, uh, and vary those things. Okay, so in this case, I want to just work with the body feathers. So I'm going to do a split, and again, this is where that path attribute comes in really handy. So um, you can either type this in, or you can click the arrow here, and then in the select mode, come up here and say path attributes. And so now you can either pick from the list here or you can just click on the things you want there and then hit enter when you're done. Okay. All right. So I've got that done. Now you see, I still don't have any access to like the individual pieces, right? This is still considered, you know, like one piece of geo, even though, it, you know, everything in Houdini is just a stream of information. So here's the path attribute that's on the primitives. Uh, here are the point attributes, which are just positional data, that's all we have. And then we have some normal and UV attributes on the vert vertices. So what I need is I need to be able to access these guys as individuals. So I run a connectivity stop. Uh, I set this to primitive. I use the n attribute name, which is kind of lame. The only reason I do that is because it makes it really easy when I do select, uh, it's already here. So I can use, uh, I can use this name attribute. Um, you also can use 3D connectivity um, that would work as well, in which case you wouldn't need uh, to, to do this extra kind of, in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip doing that, creating that attribute, and I'm going to create a null, that way I can branch this off. Right, and so we're going to come here, and so now I have, uh, based on their, their connections, I can come in and I can make, you know, select groups, and so I'll come in here like, so I can get a perfectly um, perfectly symmetrical, right? So come in here, come to my selection node, and uh, I'm going to use select lasso. Uh, I'm on 3D connected geometry, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to create a section for my throat. And I'm going to tab in the viewport and type group. Okay, and so this is making the groups that I need. All right, so in this case, I'll name it. You know, the thing that sucks about this is this is very non-procedural. Um, that what will happen here is uh, is when um, the model changes, this will get messed up. So this is one way of doing it. So we're going to call this throat feathers. Okay. So there's another way of doing this that we could, instead of using um, the selection, Right, is we could just disable that there, and we could use um, bounding regions. Right, so in this case, it's a bounding box. We can use a bounding sphere, uh, and then uh, if you'll see, our, our actually our tools work here, our, our three D preview tools, and so I can I can shrink this down. So just just out of ease, I'm going to do this. Get that thing smaller. Our bounding sphere. So it's still really big. Point one, point one, point one, and now I can move this thing around. Right. Oh, I don't want that. I just want just this one. Right, and so now I have something that even if the model changes, like some stuff changes in here, this is going to always stay true. Um, that I'll have these, these throat feathers and then, you know, I can stretch this out and do whatever. Right, so there. Maybe that's my throat feathers. 
Um, and then once I've created a couple of these, I'll do some stuff where I can um, extract out. So, right, so I'll make a second one here, copy, paste. Um, and I'm going to call uh, this one belly feathers. Type belly feathers. Okay, so now with belly feathers selected, I'm going to come down here and uh, we're going to we're going to grab these guys so that I like that. Oh, I don't want the back; just want the belly. Um, and you can use this actually with um, regular geometry as well. Like we could come in here. Um, This way, that way it stays centered. Oh, that's too far. So this is 0.15, maybe. No, it's still too big. One, two, five. Eh, get a little better. Maybe two. Maybe 0.215. Anyway, so y you get the idea. And so you have the ability to kind of create this, um, you know, and I could, so for example, I could do this here and, and get a certain part, and then I could do a second one. And a third one, and instead of doing replace existing, I could say union with existing or intersecting with existing, subtract. And so you could use these to kind of create your uh, your bird um, feather shapes. The other thing I could do is I could actually make a um, uh, I could make an object, and then instead of doing a primitive group, I could do a um, I could do a point group and uh, Oh, but see, look, there is some poopiness to this. You see, um, since this is using these spheres, it's capturing not the entirety of the feather. Uh, so let me pause for a second. Let me show you a better way to set this. All right, all right. So what I did was I just went and did a connectivity, and I did a for each, um, which you have to do this because this for each takes into account an attribute, which in this case is class, which is what is created by this connectivity set. And then I packed them all. So if we come back into here now, I've got a whole bunch of packed geos. And so what that allows me to do is allows me to select these um, where before we were having uh, partial feathers get selected, right? So just some of the geometry on, on the feather getting selected, not the whole feather, where now we get the entirety of the feather, which, which is more of what I want. And so, you know, with this, I can come in here and just make sure I have the pieces that I want. Um, and the cool thing about this now is you can also do this off of points um, because each one of these is a packed primitive. They each just have a point that they're associated with. And so you could use um, outside geometry instead of this and actually model something that would represent that. And then you could convert those groups to primitive groups. Uh, by doing this, you'd say group promote. Okay. And so we could take our belly feathers group and we're going to promote this to primitive because it's a point and it should just keep the same name so there we go so now we see we went from points to primitives and those matter um, and how you know you want you want primitive groups um, for your shaders uh, to attach to uh, and so yeah so that's how you you could do that and so you can create these cool schemes for generating your groups to then uh, create your shaders on. So in this case, I'm going to keep this as my belly. Um, and then uh, let's do this. Let's copy and paste because I'm going to say that I want to uh, I want to go ahead and add like a I want it to come up a little bit higher, but I want just on the throat. So I could do this. And I could do this. And I can say, oh, that's too wide. So I can come in here and say delete that too much still 075 all right so I could come in and say that this is my these are my bellies right so there I have this but because you see now this replaced it instead of replacing I could say union with existing and you see that all my previous nodes group assignments stayed and now when I go to this I've got my belly Right? And I could go in and do like another one to catch these feathers or whatever and kind of sculpt this out. Now, one of the other things I can do, because I don't want my belly feathers and my throat feathers to intersect, right, is I could come here and I could say group edit. Group, sorry, edit group maybe. Edit combine. The name's changed at one point and 
So group edit is no longer a thing. So group combined. So with group combined, I can come in and say, uh, I can take my belly feathers equals belly feathers, right? So that way I get my group. And then this I can say, uh, uh, subtraction with throat feathers. And is it subtraction? Uh, exclusion, maybe. Oops, sorry. Not exclusion, subtraction. So there you go. So here you see that um, that way I don't get groups stacked on top of groups, although um, it won't matter based on how you order your material shader. You can have these groups, you know, intersect. It'll just take the latest assignment. But in this case, you know, what I'm trying to do is get something that has belly feathers all the way up to where the throat is, but maybe not including the throat, right? So I could come into here to this guy again and you know, maybe open this up just a little bit to something like, like so. And now when I come here, you see I've got the belly feathers that I am like, oh, yeah, so I did that only on one side, which I don't want. So let's do this one. One, oh, nine. I'm being really nerdy about this, how this is laid out. There we go. And then maybe this comes down a little bit. There, so now I got some belly feathers, right? And then, you know, I could I could go in and probably get underneath here and, you know, get the, the bottom of it and all that stuff. But this gives me the ability to now have different feather groups, right? So now that I've done this, um, so I've had this, you know, little chain of, of groupings that I've created for my feathers. Uh, I'm gonna merge this back together with my split, right? So I'll take my merge that's coming off of my split where I broke this out. I'm just going to connect that back in. And then I'll connect this. And now I can have hummingbird feathers. I'll do like a general one and then I'm going to copy and paste this and call this throat feathers spell throat feathers and then I'll copy, paste, and we're going to make this belly feathers. Okay, so I'm going to come into here and my throat feathers, and let's see which ramp is chosen here. That's the color I want for my throat feathers. I'm going to come into my belly feathers, and for these ones I am going to this but I'm going to play this down and make this some iridescent -y. we'll do something pastel -y, right so we'll do something like this Okay, so now I'm going to come back up to my hummingbird, and I'm going to add, uh, I've already got my belly feathers, right? So hummingbird feathers are on the general one. Um, and now I'm going to add uh, two more. So for this one, I'm going to pick for my group. I'm going to say throat feathers for my material. I'm going to come back in here and find my throat feathers, make sure it's a uh, relative path, say accept. This one, I'm going to go ahead and pick my belly feathers. Just like this, come back in here and get my hummingbird belly feathers relative path. Now I come into my render view, and I'm going to go ahead and hit render. And this is going to freak out the whatever, but there you go. So now I have two different feathers. Oh, I didn't catch on the rest of that. The My other feathers should have been on a general feather. Hummingbird feather should be on. might have lost that group. 
if I un... Oh, because they're packed. <laughs> so now I have to unpack those again. Because right? their paths got all messed up, right? So when I unpack them, and I'm going to go ahead and transfer the groups, right? So I'll transfer groups, and I'll transfer path. Oh, nope, don't transfer path. Uh, because the path is trying to create the path from the Alembic file, or from this Houdini file. Um, and so now I have, you know, total control over those different feathers, and uh, I can start playing with those. And ideally, what happens here is, I wish this was, uh, you know, if we start um, moving around the camera, cam one, so we'll lock this, let's come back up to render view, snapshot that, scene view, and come around like this. And you'll, we should be able to see that, you know, I'm getting some iridescence on that throat. In fact, I'm getting iridescence on all the feathers. So, yeah. And then I'll, I would go through and like, I would create a group that's like the edge of this, right? So that way I could have some slightly different, like I could transition these a little differently and, uh, you know, just play with it. Anyway, there's some cool Houdini stuff.